Well, hello. Uh, we're starting lecture six here. Lecture six is about perception in the world. Now, why am I giving two perception lectures? Lecture five was about perception. Why am I back talking about perception? Well, because there's a big difference between the way perception happens in the world and the way perception is studied in the lab. So in the lab, as you can see in the picture here on the bottom left, um, we typically bring people into the lab and sit them in front of a computer, maybe put them in a headrest so they can't move their heads, um, and they push a button when they see something or make a judgment. Uh, but in the world, it doesn't look like the lab, right? The observer, instead of being stationary, is moving. Uh, they're picking up objects. They're not at the same distance all the time from the objects. There's complex lighting. There's context. There's all sorts of things. So we're going to talk about uh, more uh, realistic aspects of uh, perception. I'm going to spend a bit of time talking about color perception and color blindness. We'll focus on context. Uh, we'll look at the evidence to support both nature and nurture as shaping your perceptual abilities. And we'll show how that story I told you that the motor systems over here and the visual systems back here is kind of oversimplified because there's probably one visual motor system. Okay, let's go. Do you remember seeing this uh, illusion a few years back, or illusion phenomenon a few years back? It was a picture of a dress. And some people perceived the dress to be blue and black, and other people perceived the dress to be white and gold. And it looked like magic, right? Um, this is actually a great example of how context shapes perception. Um, it, there's a couple of graphs uh, on the right side, a little bit hard to see, but uh, I want to show you that there's an interesting relationship between the assumptions that observers make about the, what they're seeing or the situation, the context in which a stimulus appears, and how they perceive that stimulus. So uh, the graph that's closest to the, the dresses um, lists on the vertical axis the percentage of uh, participants who perceive the dress as white and gold as a function of whether they uh, assumed that the dress was in a shadow or in full light. And what you can see is that when people thought the dress was in a shadow, about 80% of the time they perceived the dress as white and gold. If they thought the dress was not in a shadow but was being illuminated uh, directly, then they were more likely to perceive the dress as blue and black. So your assumptions about um, the lighting change your perception of the color of the dress. Uh, a little smaller effect, but an interesting one nonetheless, is people's assumption about what kind of lighting, not whether it was direct or indirect, but whether it was indoor light or outdoor light. People who assumed that the dress was um, appeared in natural light, in outdoor light, were more likely to perceive it as white and gold than people who assumed that the dress was in artificial light. Why is that interesting? Well, there's this crazy phenomenon with this dress. What color you perceive the dress to be depends a lot on your age. You can see that younger people, so let's say people younger than the age, but let's say 60 and below, were you know, about 50-50 about whether they saw the dress as white and gold or blue and black. But as uh, people uh, got older than about 60-65, we see a sharp decrease in the number of people reporting the dress as white and gold. In other words, Older observers perceive the dress to be black and blue. Why? Well, honestly, we don't know. The guess is that the older generation spent a lot of time outdoors when they were kids playing. I mean, there were no computers. Yeah, it was a different world. There wasn't TV. Um, uh, so maybe their visual system makes assumption about natural lighting when people who grew up 
uh, indoors more, make assumptions about artificial lighting? We're not sure. Um, but this is just a great example of people perceiving the same stimulus differently, depending on the context. Here's another context effect. Knowledge. Your knowledge and your past experience determine what you see. So um, these are some pictures of the current president and the first lady um, during a um, memorial for 9-11. And if you'll remember what happened on 9-11, um, uh, two planes flew into two different buildings, uh, two parts of the World Trade Center, and then um, a third plane uh, flew into the Pentagon. Um, World Trade Center is a very tall, skinny building. Okay. Melania Trump wore the dress that you could see here, and it had some interesting stitching on the back. And on the far right side, you can see a close-up of the stitching on the back of her coat. I'm sure that nobody really thought about it when they put it on, at least I assume so. But in the context of thinking about 9-11, it changes your perception of that stitching, doesn't it? Looks a bit like something flying into or out of a building, tall, skinny building. Yeah. So knowledge changes perception. I want to start my discussion of perception of color. And you'll remember in one of the uh, lecture five mini lectures, I talked about everybody being colorblind in, per, in their peripheral vision. And I'm going to spend a little bit of time talking about that now, clarifying it. This figure you've seen before. You have little circles that are red, green, and blue. Those represent the class of photoreceptors referred to as cones, and cones code for color. Cones are also located in a particular part of your retina called the fovea. So they're all grouped together in the center. So light that falls onto cones can be interpreted uh, with respect to color. You can get color information from the responses of cones. But notice that in the periphery, all the way around sort of the donut um, to the cones donut hole, around the donut itself of the, the retina, um, the kind of photoreceptors that we have are rods. And rods do not code for color. They are black and white. Right? They care about shades of gray. And the rods that we have are not in the fovea. They're outside of the fovea. So what does this mean? When you look straight ahead at something, like you're looking at me, maybe my nose, my face, my nose, that is falling on your fovea, right? Right in the middle where all the cones are. But all of the rest of what you're seeing around me, that's falling on the rods that are in your peripheral vision. And that's actually, from a, from a standpoint of sensation and perception, frankly, that's black and white vision. So I tried to represent that here. Immediately where you look, it's color, but to the sides of that, you actually experience black and white. Now, huh? I mean, that seems so weird because my experience of the world, and I'm, I'm assuming it's like yours, is I experience a world that when I look out into the world, it's all color. There's no like color experience and then black and white, like some sort of twisted Wizard of Oz movie. Why is that? Well, top-down processing. Your brain fills in the color. How does it do that? Well, when we are in an environment in the real world, unlike the lab, we look around, we move around. So my brain remembers the colors, right, from when I looked around and uses that information to um, fill in or give me the illusion that I'm perceiving color. Now, there's another aspect of rods that is kind of interesting. They are not used they're, they're not good for picking up details of, in full light. Um, rod vision is basically our nighttime vision. Cone vision is really our daytime vision. So the nighttime vision, it's not set up for high acuity, high resolution in, in light. So during the day, um, we have clear color vision in the center, and then this blurry black and white vision around the sides. So that raises a question, again, 
why, why do I experience the world as equally clear everywhere? Perception, it's wild. Okay, we're going to come back and I'm going to convince you that your colorblind and or colorblindness actually doesn't even exist for the vast majority of people. Come right back.